Hello, and welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're jumping in with the HJet version 2 to look at how the GTC controls interact with your screens and how you can leverage them. So let's go ahead, jump into The Sim, and get started. Now, first up, we are sitting in a full version, not a light version. So when you're picking your livery, you have the ability to select from a group of different options. So you'll see two copies of the same livery that look the same. With a light livery, these two GTCs are identical. It's rendering the same thing to save resources targeted specifically for lower end machines or Xbox that has memory issues. It also means that this PFD is going to be matching the left side PFD. So the goal there was to reduce it. However, in the non-light version, the two GTCs are independent of one another and both PFDs are independent of one another and you can set up on each of them whether or not you will have split uh, settings. So when you're looking at your PFD, you can go into settings and you can change the mode into a split mode and you can do that on each of them. So if we go back to our PFD settings and we go back into full mode. The key of this is explaining how to interact with the controls and how this interaction is reflected to the screens. Now the main thing to pay attention to is you'll see the left GTC shows you the cyan, uh, blue, whatever you want to call it, color. That color depicts the color frame of where these controls will be sending into the sim. You will notice that there is a move the joystick left, move the joystick right, and that will shift which pane the control is being assigned to. Obviously right now we only have two panes open because neither PFD is in a split mode. In which case, blue or cyan is left and purple is the right control. At any time, you can choose which one of these is going to go full. So if you could imagine if we were looking at traffic on the right hand side, and with traffic you were to instead hit the full screen, then traffic goes full, you see purple is highlighted, which means the purple pane or the right GTC is in control. Therefore, because there is nowhere for the left GTC to have been assigned control, there is no available pane open, this will go into cross-side full screen mode. So this does allow you to return it to half screen, and you can still use the controls at the top. So you can still get into your aviation and radios, so you can monitor your audio and your comms. You could still come in and set your VOR frequency, uh, like 1146, because that's the local VOR. You could also still control your comm directly you are also able to change your microphone as well as monitor the standby audio control com 2 and of course you can still control your transponder from this side what you can't do is interact with the controls that are related to the mfd because the right side is in control currently now if we return to half mode then of course on the left hand side it's going to go back to blue and now it's going to disconnect. If we were to have pressed full on the left side, it will show us the blue, which correlates to the pane, and on the right hand side, it goes into that same full screen mode because it had nowhere to go to. If we come over to the left hand side, we'll throw this guy into split mode. Now we have three panes and two controllers. So if we were to make the right side full for traffic at this moment, what'll happen is the GTC on the left, the blue, will automatically transfer to the left pane 
because this one was available. And so instead of going into a full screen mode, it will automatically transfer to the first available pane. Of course, when you return this to half screen, the control will not automatically transfer back. So here you can see the navigation map is currently unassigned to a controller. If I want to move the navigation control from the left pane over to the middle left pane, you want to use the pane control and it's telling me left or right. This knob is actually a joystick. So it has four directions, up, down, left, right, but it also has a push button and it does actually have an encoder knob. So this is a really neat joystick that Garmin has. Being in legacy control mode, I get the little hand icon. So really quick, what are we talking about with legacy control mode? This is a mode that a lot of us who come from previous Sims uh, used a lot uh, and didn't like the new lock interaction mode because it turns on those blue highlights and they're kind of ugly. So if we could turn off the blue highlights, we might stay with lock interaction mode. Uh, and what do we mean by that? So if we come into our general options and you come to accessibility, you're going to find that there is a cockpit interaction system. So there's legacy and there is lock mode. Now, when it is in lock mode, then you can have tool tips and instrument names and things that you can still turn off, uh, but you can't get rid of the blue highlight. So when we're talking about using legacy mode, you'll see that the little arrows pop up. So I can go ahead and I can click on the right arrow and it moved the pane into this control space. So now anything that we're doing here, this is gonna control this screen. So when we look at the aircraft systems and we bring up a status page or we bring up the environment, you will see it placed here. When we jump back a moment and we look at the control of the H-Jet yoke, you'll remember that you have the control of the checklists on this knob. And when you click on it, it would automatically bring you back to the checklist and then allow you to start advancing your checklist items. And if you were to hold it down for an extended period of time, it would revert back to the last menu page that you had open. The thing to note is this knob is always going to control the blue pane. So if we were over on the left hand side and you had checklists open, but you reverted back over here to the middle control, the moment I click on a checklist, it's still going to bring it back up inside of the blue pane. Also note that checklists are independent, so you can run them in separate screens and they are not linked. And of course, not everything is capable of going full screen. So here, for example, the status and the synoptics uh, menu pages, these cannot go full screen. If I was in the sim options, these cannot go full screen, right? If I change it to say the weather page, then you'll notice the full screen comes up. If I go to waypoint information, of course the screen never changes on us, right? So primarily you can change the focus of these between map settings, traffic, weather, and then your aircraft systems. Uh, so coming back down so we can see this. So the other thing you'll see is when you have additional controls in the joystick, you're going to see that this shows up. So range plus minus, what plus minus refers to is the outer encoder on the knob. So, and if you hover, of course, you can use your scroll wheel when on top and that will spin the knob as well. So that's how you use the joystick with the map section. You'll also notice it says push to pan. So just like the real unit, if I click on the knob, it will bring up the touchpad and we can pan our cursor around using the touchpad. So that's kind of cool as well. Go ahead 
over hold it off to the side and don't go too far off the screen uh, because it won't register no pinch to zoom does not work that's just the graphic and of course when you're done with that you can hit home and it will return you back out and take you out of that panning mode on the right hand side you have the exact same controls again when we're not in the light liveries and if you want you can still send the left control screen over to the PFD so either GTC can be assigned to any of the panes and when you have the full version running you can also still come over to the right hand side and set up a fourth pane which you can assign things to as well we're going to switch back to lock mode for a moment so that we can see what this looks like for everyone else so here what you're going to see is now when you can grab a control it gives you the highlight and for controlling the pain you will grab and hold and when you hold it of course if you have the tooltips it will pop up and tell you to move the map pointer right you're going to go left and right now that's when you're in the map mode uh, understand that this right is also how you can drag the joystick so you can see drag left drag right and I can navigate which pane we are currently controlling before between all four panes so if we zoom out and of course because this one is currently held in the middle now we can move it to there and then this is only going to jump between available panes and of course you can just drag left and right all the way to the left all the way to the right and if we turn off our, our sorry if we go to PFD settings oh I hate those tooltips and I hate the blue stuff alright so because we've turned that off of course now when I click and hold I can only drag it between the left and the right it won't go any further so again it only goes past it when you have multiples available and if I want to click on this button for example to get into pan mode I hold down with the left button and now I have to use the right mouse button to actually perform the click so that's it that's all you have to do to control your GTC's and how the behavior is going to interact between the two of them with all three or four screens depending how you want to interpret it and don't forget about how the joystick controls on the yoke for the checklist are going to only go to where the blue pane is well if you've made it this far please hit that like button subscribe if you haven't and come along with us next time as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.